Now, why have I spent all this time sort of introducing this idea? Well, what it means is it's kind of my, my stepping stone into my formal proof of Euler's formula. Um, Euler's formula, you might recall, it starts off with um, this expression here on the left hand side, e to the power of i x. So we've got the exponential base here. Um, we've got some unknown x, it's a variable. And then we have the imaginary unit i, the square root of negative one uh, up here in the index as well. Now you may remember the informal result that we got for the right hand side of Euler's formula, but I want to kind of, because we're trying to do a, a formal proof of this, right, and do this rigorously, I want you to imagine, maybe this doesn't take imagination because you've forgotten, but I want you to imagine how would we find out the value of this thing if we did not know what it was? If you didn't know what the right hand side was supposed to be equal to, how would you determine its value, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to say since the field of complex numbers is algebraically closed, if you start with complex numbers and you put them together, no matter what you do, plus minus, times divide, ex exponential, like all those kinds of things, no matter what you do you'll stay within the field of complex numbers, what I can say is even though I don't know what e to the i x is, it should be a complex number of some form, right? Of some variety. Now, we've got uh, a couple of different ways to write complex numbers at this point, right? We could write it uh, in, in rectangular form, um, or we could write it in um, what we would call mod arg or polar form, right? Using these trigonometric equations. So, um, because I already know where I'm headed, and I'm going to try and do this as efficiently as possible, even though it's going to take a while, right? Um, I'm not going to use rectangular form. It ends up being, uh, I was going to say less useful, but I'm also going to say it's just, just harder to get there. Um, this form here, um, the polar form, the mod arg form, is going to be much more useful to me, okay? So this thing here, I don't know what it's going to be equal to, but I know it's going to be some complex number, okay? So I'm going to use this polar form, but what I am going to do, in addition to uh, just saying I'm going to use this form, I'm not going to write it in exactly this way because this seems to suggest that I know what the r and the theta are. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be some complex number of unknown form uh, with some modulus, so I'm going to use the letter m, and there's going to be some other argument. So it's going to be cos of, instead of using theta, uh, I'm going to use the letter t plus i, whoopsie daisy, sine t. Okay. Now, um, what are we saying here, right? We've got this, this weirdo expression on the left hand side, um, but you're putting complex numbers into it and you are expecting to get complex numbers out. And every complex number that we can think of anywhere on the complex plane can be expressed in this form. So for some particular modulus and for some particular argument. Now the only catch is, and the thing that's tricky about this, right, is that I'm going to treat, I mean E is a number, 2.718, etc. I is a number, the square root of negative one, these guys are well defined, but X is a variable. Um, I'm going to treat X as something that can change value. Now if this thing can change value, that means that the complex number you get at the end can also change value. Which means that, uh, let's see if we can use some, some highlighting over here, I'll change this over to purple so I don't have to confused. Oh, pink will do. Um, I'm going to say this, this modulus here, right? Um, when I say m, I don't just mean um, a number. I mean m as a function of x. If x can change, oopsie daisy, if x can change, if it's variable, then the modulus of, like if it's this complex number can change, so therefore its modulus should be able to change as well. So m is a shorthand for m as a function of x. And it's going to be the same deal for t. Um, because if I change what this value is, then I'm going to change the complex number that I get over on the right hand side, so the argument will change as well. So when you see me writing t, um, what I actually mean is uh, t as a function of x. So these guys here are shorthand for t of x. Okay. So um, I guess a, a long way to write it is to say, um, if I've got e to the ix, it equals m of x uh, multiplied by cos of, uh, I'm going to use a curly brace here because I've got so many brackets flying around, okay? Uh, this is going to be t of x plus i sine of t of x. Okay, so I know this looks like a bit of a mess, but uh, this is this is how we're going to have to deal with it because it's a complex, <laughs> a complicated idea, so we need to use some complicated tools to do it. All right. So this is what I've set up. I've got uh, this thing and I'm trying to find out, this will be my goal, right? Um, what is my, my function out the front here? Uh, the modulus will change, but how will it change? And then what, what will be my functions in here? The argument will change, but how will it change? This will be the question, okay? 
So, um, this may seem a bit familiar to the informal proof. You might remember um, it kind of was built on this idea, right? That you had a, a, a real part and you had an imaginary part, but because they changed, I called them A of X and B of X. Well, this time I'm using the polar form, I'm kind of going straight there, but I'm recognizing the fact that I don't know what the modulus will be, and I don't know what the arguments will be, so I'm gonna have to sort out, like, what are those, right? Now, uh, I'm going to employ the same tool that I used before um, with my informal proof, with the rectangular form, uh, and that is calculus, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this awkward uh, line, I'm going to take the left-hand side and right-hand side, I'm going to differentiate both of them. So, let's have a go at that. Um, the derivative of uh, e to the i x equals the derivative of, and then I have this thing, this entire thing here. So I'm going to duplicate that. Um, and <laughs> I've run out of different kinds of brackets. I'm going to use some really big square ones. Okay, so what have I got here? Uh, well, on the left-hand side, let's deal with that because it's a bit easier first. Um, this is an exponential, right? Now, you've already looked at these before, so um, the derivative of this, this is chain rule again, is going to be the derivative of the inside, which in this case, the derivative of ix is just i, and then the derivative of the outside is e to the power of something, so the derivative of that is just e to the power of something, the same something, by the way, so that's e to the i x. So I've dealt with the left-hand side, that's good. Now, what's going on the right-hand side? Well, this, this is a mess, so we are going to have to deal with it uh, fairly carefully and slowly. Um, the first thing is, I notice that I have a product here, um, inside here. So I've got uh, this guy, and then I've got this guy here. Right, so um, I'm going to call this my u, and I'm going to call this my v. Now, when I use the product rule, um, I'm going to have to say um, the derivative will be v u dash plus u v dash, but I need to know what each of those things are, um, and that's as you can see a little bit messy because my my v in this case, um, this this is a mess. Is gonna there's like sort of um, a really deep rabbit hole here, right? Like, like it's functions within functions within functions. So we're going to have to do this nice and slow. Let's take our time through it. So, uh, first let's deal with u, right? So, u is just equal to m of x. So, therefore, u dash, I would just write that as m. I'm actually going to use, um, I'm going to switch over to um, the Leibniz notation here. So, I'm going to go dm on dx. Um, I actually, I, I try to avoid my dash notation if I can, especially when it's mixing in with other things because it's so easy to confuse with powers, right? That's, that is definitely a dash and not a one. Uh, now, what do we have next? Well, I'm defining v as uh, this mess here, right? So I'm going to write that as, uh, I'm just going to duplicate it over here. Am I going to have enough space? I have a feeling I'm going to have to make it smaller. That'll just fit. All right, so there's my, I'll move this out of the way. There's my V. So what is V dash? Well, <laughs> you again have a complicated mess in here, right? So let's just zoom in over here and see what's going on. Um, I need to differentiate um, all of these different pieces here, but there's several things happening. So, let's just look at this first bit here. Cos of t of x. So this is chain rule. I said we were going to use this, we've already used it once, um, here comes the second time, right? So cos of a function, you do the inside and then you do the outside. Well, in this case, the inside is t of x. So therefore, its derivative, the inside derivative, I'm going to switch over to Leibniz now, right, is dt on dx, okay? Oh, sorry, by the way, I should have said, if you've not been introduced to the history of this, right? Um, calculus, differential calculus, when it was first being devised, um, generally we agree now, we understand through the lens of, of hindsight and history, um, that Isaac Newton and a guy named Gottfried Leibniz, they kind of um, invented calculus at the same time. And um, the, the main notation that we use these days is Leibniz's notation, which is, um, you know, this dy on dx or dt on dx or whatever you like, right? So, there is um, the inside derivative. Now let's do the outside. This is cos. Cos differentiates, as I said, I'm just going to take this as a result. You can go and have a look um, at the videos if you want to see how to prove this result. The derivative of cos is negative sine. So let's just write that like so, negative sine. Um, and I don't need to differentiate this thing anymore, so I'm going to write that as t, like so. Okay. Actually, you know what? I don't need those big square brackets. Let's just use regular ones. Okay, um, there's the first part there, but now I need to deal with this part as well. So I'm going to deal with the derivative of the inside and the outside. Uh, the derivative of the inside, well, it's t of x is the inside function again. So I'm going to get dt on dx. Then what happens on the inside? Well, I've got um, an i, which is just a constant, so it's going to hang out the front there, i. And then sine 
of, a, of, of something is going to become cos of something. So I end up with cos of t. Whew. Okay, so what, if, what have we just done? Um, you've got uh, two uses of the chain rule within our use of the product rule. Okay, so yes, that is a bit messy. Um, we could tidy up a teeny tiny bit. Um, I'll go minus, uh, what should I write first? I'll go minus of sine t dt on dx plus i cos t dt on dx. All right, at last, we've got v dash. So now I'm going to be doing my product rule. I've got my u, my u dash, my v, my v dash. There's a lot there, but thankfully this will, like, this is probably about the worst point. It, once I start substituting all this in, it will start to collapse together from there. All right, so v, u dash, uh, u, v dash. Here we go. Um, v is just going to be uh, cos of, I, I'm going to stop writing t of x like I did over here because I did it just to remind me it's a function when I'm differentiating, but, but I've done all my differentiating now. So um, it's going to be cos of t plus i sine of t. There's v. What's u dash? Well, here is his u dash over here. So I'm going to write that as dm on dx. Take a breath. Um, plus, let's see, I think I'm going to, I'm drastically running out of space here, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll write this on the, um, I'm going to move this down, and then I'm going to use that space a bit later on. So, there's my v u dash. Here comes u v dash, so it's just m, that's u. And then the v dash was that very long, awkward thing that I wrote uh, down here. This is my v dash, right? So what have we got here? Um, I've got minus sine t dt on dx plus i cos t dt on dx. 